control. Alpha team. Only one path to victory, Guardians. All right, people, what's going on? Denano here, the man with black privilege, and this is going to be uh, my video on the Taken King. Um, now that I've actually played it, uh, this is just this isn't going to be uh, a straight up review. Um, this is just going to be my uh, my first impressions on the game so far. Um, I still I, I've, I've pretty much played everything except the raid, <laughs> and that's just because uh, the friend who I used to play it with. Uh, you know, he didn't want me to buy it for him this time because he's a pussy and didn't want to suffer through this bullshit with me. <laughs> but, um, so I, right now I have, like, nobody to play with. So if any of you guys want to hit me up, you want to play together, want to uh, want to run the raid or, you know, do what, do any, you know, anything in the game, please hit me up with a friend's request. Let me know. But anyway, so far, um, I've played through the story, uh, played through all of the extra quests and stuff you get um like i said i did everything but the raid and um the story this time around well i can't really call it a story it's more of a an an expanded setting that's what i'm gonna call it <laughs> uh it's 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 okay i will say this for uh for an expansion, no, 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 wait, I can't really call this an expansion, it's, this is, for, for added DLC content, um, the, the story was, a uh, it was okay, I mean, it, it, it was pretty good, you had a lot of, uh, they actually showed you cutscenes, you know, it had, uh, not necessarily an overarching story, but you had a beginning, a middle, and an end, Granted, it was still missing the in-between parts, you know, that, that that would mostly make up a story, but you got uh, more more meat on your plate compared, you know, compared to year one. Year one, you just got like the plate, the knife, and the fork, <laughs> you know. Year two, you got the plate, the knife, the fork, the steak, the mashed potatoes, you know, they kind of skipped out on the vegetables a little bit, <laughs> so you got a little bit more. Um, what you did get you got a really you got a narrative you know you got exactly what was missing with year one you you got a a, a like it, it's it's kind of like a short story almost like you know like for anybody who reads um i know you know that seems to be not a lot of people nowadays but it, it, it kind of reminds me of a short story where like a regular novel book you have a beginning middle and character character development overarching plot all of that kind of sort of stuff twists and turns whereas a short story kind of gives you the introduction to characters uh you know the premise the setting the plot and then you know it, it, it kind of skips out a little bit and that's what the taken king feels like you got introduced to the game you played through it um you got the taken king who comes up big bad he wants to take over you mad that you for killing his son crota and you 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 saw a progression, you know, and it was that progression that you didn't get where you were one. You got the characters in the game. Um, again, they still have a lot of unanswered questions, like the uh, the AI Rasputin. You don't hear nothing with. Um, what else? Uh, you don't still hear nothing about the Traveler. That doesn't get explained. Why why they're they're able to resurrect you? <laughs> every every time you die but are somehow losing this overarching war with the darkness never answered um but what they what they did give you was um i can't say they gave you character depth but you got to saw or you got to see the different characters or huh, wait huh. I'm trying to figure out how, I mean, I mean, how I'm going to word this without saying the word twice, but it looks like I have to. You got to see the different characters' character. Um, you know, you got to see their character, their personalities uh, a little bit more. You know, in the main game, they were kind of just standing there in the Vanguard Tower, just chilling, would speak to you every time you came and talked to them. That was it. Whereas in this, you got to see them arguing a little bit when they were deciding on what to do in the cutscene. Um, you, you saw the Awoken, a little bit more of them, 
you know, and how they got their ass handed to him. Um, but you saw a little bit more and it lets you pretty much divine the personalities of the people you interacted with in the game. And even after the story mode, like whenever you go back to the tower, when you when like a random quest pops up, they talk to you more about the quest and stuff like that. So you get to see their personalities when you're playing the game. They're not all just there, you know, like blank faces that you don't know. So I thought that was pretty good. Voice acting uh, still on par. Still got all the same voice actors that they had. Um, it's nobody was shit. <laughs> I will say that. I think they got what Nathan Fillion to be Cade Six. Uh, he killed it, as I you know as I know he would. I mean he, he he's good at playing those rogue roguish type characters. And you have Nolan North being the new ghost. He was okay. <laughs> um, he's a robotic, you know, version of his voice. So, I mean, far better than Peter, uh, Peter Dinklage, but I know Peter Dinklage would have killed it too. Um, I know a lot of people didn't like him from year one, but I know me, I don't blame him for that. I blame Bungie because they probably gave him shit to work with. But other than that, the music was done uh, pretty good. I will say this, the music from year one, to me, was garbage. Uh, besides the main theme of the game, everything else was, I, you know, I forgot it the moment I heard it. Um, and normally for me, as somebody who is into sci-fi, that doesn't really happen all that much. Like, when I played Halo, that made me buy all the soundtracks. When I played Mass Effect... That made me get the soundtracks. <laughs> when I played uh, other sci-fi shooters, I normally buy the soundtracks with them because I I love the music to them. Destiny, it, it came and went. I could give two fucks about the music, besides the main thing. But when you first turn on the game, you had the different music playing at the main menu screen. They changed the title of the of the game when like when you're at the screen where it says press start. It's it reminded me like kind of what they do with MMOs. You, you normally see that from an MMO whenever they have like an expansion come out. And maybe that's w what they were going for. But like I said before, I wouldn't call Destiny an expansion or I wouldn't call the Taken King an expansion because that's a, a a word I normally define, you know, define with other games and uh, games with tons of more content. Like I wouldn't call this an expansion. It's not big enough. An expansion to me in this, they would have to add a whole another galaxy with a whole, and have each planet be as big and have the world uh, ha, um, as in-depth as the Dreadnought was in the Taken King. And uh, speaking of the Dreadnought, the Dreadnought was done pretty good. One thing I will say, along with the, the story mode and everything else in the game, the level design was done very well. You had invisible platforms, you had stealth missions, you had tons of collectibles on the map like random chests that that uh would be around the world that you can't open that you got to figure out how to open you have uh you might kill an enemy you know pick up a rune that might start a uh, uh another quest that you didn't that you don't know about that you got to figure out how to do it felt more adventurous when you were on the dreadnought i want every world <laughs> in patrol to be like that you know that would have made the original you know, version of Destiny so much more better because in Patrol, it kind of felt boring and boring as shit because you, you mean, yo, yeah, run around and do this bullshit fetch quest. Kill five enemies to pick up their, you, you know, you know, like their item and find two, you know, you know find like a hundred of them. It, it was boring. It was stupid. Whereas in this, there, there's a lot more adventuring and there's a lot more that, that's unknown that you got to figure out. And that, and, and for me, that's kind of half the fun. Uh, what else? Um, like all the new graphical changes, the HUD, the armor system is done pretty good this time around. I like the fact that they changed the light system, but at the same time, I also hate the fact that they gimped all of the year one equipment into bullshit. I don't understand why they did that, because it's, it seems like they want everybody to jump on the year two stuff. But then that doesn't make sense when getting exotics was the was the whole purpose of the game. And in 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 year two, there's no way I can take my bad juju that you see me using in this video and rank it up to be on par with year two. Why is that? You know, I can understand if it's like okay, well, it's gonna be gimmed, but 
but you can level it up some kind of way, you know, in the game through like resources or through doing a quest or something. But no, it's it's just it's just complete shit. There is no way I can't even use the newer weapon systems on the year one equipment at all. That's that's fucking bullshit to me. I hate that. Um, but it, it is fun. Loving the new subclass. Um, I've I only tried the uh, the Titan one. I know I had, or when I first played, I had um, I had a warlock and I had a hunter, but I mostly stay on my Titan, and um, I haven't tried my warlock one yet. But the Titan one, it's it's like why use anything else? I mean that hammer is the shit. I love that hammer. Um, I got a clip that I'm gonna probably pull up later on the day of me where I destroyed the whole team and in, in Crucible with it. Love the hammer, man. It's it's like. It's like you can spam eight Nova bombs out and and wreck shop on the whole team, and it's just glorious and completely overpowered. But but I guess that's the reason you know that makes the game fun. So, but in my opinion, is the game worth forty dollars? Hell no. A big hell no. It's more like twenty to me. Um, but it it is far better than what it was during release. I will say that. So. If you got the money and willing to, you know, to drop 40 on it, hey, do you. I can't tell you not to get it. But um, that's just my thoughts on the game. So as, so as always, let me know down there in the comment box if you have something to say. My name is Dananu, the man with the most biggest and most blackest privilege on YouTube. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.